Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is Marrakesh, Morocco, where civil riots are looming. Your targets are private banker Klaus Strandberg and army general Reza Zedan, two of the conspirators in a sinister plot to overthrow Morocco's fragile government. Strandberg, a former bank CEO who stole billions of dollars worth of savings from the Moroccan people, was facing trial for investment fraud. But early this morning, a band of heavily armed mercenaries freed Strandberg from his prison transport, resulting in the death of several police officers. Strandberg now takes refuge at his native Swedish consulate, in front of which crowds of angry protesters have gathered, demanding his handover to Moroccan authorities. We believe General Zaydan orchestrated Strandberg's escape to infuriate the public and spark nationwide riots, allowing Zaydan to impose martial law. Operating out of a field HQ at a nearby abandoned school, he will no doubt use the riots to depict the Rabat government as weak and inept, and persuade the general staff to support a fully-fledged military coup in the name of national security. Our client, building contractor Hamilton Lowe, who stands to lose a fortune in government contracts, has hired us to prevent the coup d'etat. To do so, you need to paralyze Zidane's rebel forces and prevent the riots from escalating further, hence the double contract. This is quite the political powder cake, 47, so be careful. The fate of a nation is at stake. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Marrakesh, 47. The situation grows more tense by the minute. The consulate is under lockdown, but the protests are only a stone throw away from full-blown riots, and Zaydan won't hesitate to unleash his troops. So whatever you're planning, time is of the essence. Good luck, 47. How's your father? Doing well. Thanks for asking. He's upstairs right now working on this novel of his, some kind of political thriller, I think. You know, airport lit. Oh, that's nice. So he doesn't miss the old school? Well, he was headmaster for 30 years, and he still carries around the master key. You know, the one that fits all the locks? He doesn't seem to be able to part with the damn thing. But. That's nostalgia for you. Well, maybe now he'll be a famous writer. The old headmaster of the school Zaydan is using as his field HQ lives right above the carpet shop. According to his son, he kept the school's master key out of nostalgia. Supposedly, this opens any lock in the building. Step. Right, and maybe my carpets are magical. <laughs> Give your old man some credit, Marwen. He might surprise you yet. Anyway, got to run. See you around. Yep, up, up, and away. Zayden keeps coming down here to check on the prisoner. I hear they were close, so what'd he do, poor bastard? The way I heard it, his brother was one of the policemen who got killed when the Mercs attacked Strandberg's prison transport this morning. 
so he, uh, he got cold feet. Tried to pull the lid on the whole operation. Uh, not smart. But According to the soldiers, the condemned prisoner in the cell was a close friend of Zaydan. However, when his brother, a Marrakesh police officer, was killed during Strandberg's breakout, the prisoner decided to betray Zaydan and go public. Alas, he was caught before he could thwart the coup d'etat. Pretty human. I'm just glad I wasn't picked for the firing squad. I hear you. You're in. Good work, 47. Now to locate General Zaydan. So what do they do? Prisoner. Uh, never you mind. General Zaydan says the man called this tool. Probably got cold feet about the operation. You're dismissed. General Satan's order. Reza? Thought you had a government to overthrow. You should always embrace the... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. And I would do it again. Proud of me. You're a monster, Reza. I am sorry about your brother. He wasn't supposed to have been at the prison transport. But you know what they say about onwards. And he died for a cause. To line the pockets of your mysterious backers. I didn't say it was a good cause. Right, right. Well, this was lovely. Now, please leave. That's it? No threats? No, I'll kill you if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> Reza. Oh, I will kill you if it's the last thing I do. Zidane won't expect resistance from a tied-up prisoner.
Time to decide. What should I do with you? But don't tell me you're sleeping, Said. Plenty of time for that, I'm sure. So what'll it be, old friend? Firing squad? Poison? Hanging? Oh, so many choices. Target down. Move on to Klaus Strandberg. And a good day to you, sir. Oh, hey, mister. Salam! I am so honored by your visit. Taste. Let me just wrap it nicely for you. It may take a while. Ah, oh, thank you. Of course I'm not going to do it. There's no way I'm getting near that place. Besides, I've got all this nice...
You made it. Most impressive, 47. Now to locate Klaus Strandberg. According to the appointment schedule, Klaus Strandberg has booked a massage to relieve his back pains. No doubt all that time in prison has caused muscle stiffness. The masseur, who works at a local clinic, has apparently already checked into the building. Massage expert Connie Angstrom reported the reception desk. That was Connie Angstrom. It is not fair. It is. Please it is. The reception desk. You can't keep me in here under these circumstances. If I had known, well, that's easy for you. Oh, come on! Yeah, Donald, I can't. No, I can't hear a word you're saying. Okay. Well, your naked silhouette guy will walk me through it. There he is. So. Pick up, Donald. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Connie Engstrom, Monsieur, here for an appointment with Klaus Strandberg. Ah, oh, Mr. Engstrom. Please proceed to the massage room. It's upstairs on the right. I'll inform Mr. Strandberg. Klaus Strandberg, go to the massage room. Your session awaits. I repeat, Klaus Strandberg. Please go to the massage room. Gotta rub you down, sir. <laughs> Uh, don't worry, okay? Uh, this is gonna be over in a second, so... <laughs> All right, go on through. Ah, so, the man with the golden touch. Uh, let's get started. Shall we? Ah, oh, this muscle tension is killing me. Why don't you lie down, Mr. Strandberg? Oh, please, call me Klaus. Well done, 47. I will leave Strandberg in your capable hands. Ah, oh, that's the ticket. I tell you, 
Nothing makes you tense like thousands of people wanting to kill you. <laughs> Hell, uh, people are funny. The fact is, if those morons had bothered to learn the first thing about market investments, my scheme would never have worked. Greed and ignorance, my friend. Those are the cornerstones to any good con. But you see, easy money, that's all people care about. So they can drive their ridiculous urban SUVs and drink wine on a Thursday, on a Tuesday, whatever, and tell each other how they've made it. It's pathetic. I own a private jet. I made it. But tell you what, you seem like a sensible guy. So I'll give you this one for free. You should pack up and leave the country because things are about to become unpleasant. So I feel a lot... Both targets down. Now head towards an exit.
compromised, but I... I don't understand. There is no sign of forced entry, no alarms, nothing. One of my people has gone missing in Johannesburg. A key bearer. I wish I'd been informed. Still, the system demands two keys, and the rest are all accounted for. Except for your late predecessors. Comp? But... This plane went down over the Pacific. It was an accident. Such was the conclusion at the time. Yes. People die, Mr. Fannin. Happens all the time, even to us. It seems like a conspiracy. Probably isn't. And yet, the failed coup in Morocco, the ether virus. Someone knows about us. There was a pattern and I failed to see it. Providence is under attack. <clears throat> How much was there? Money. <laughs> Not money, Mr. Fennin. Information on all of our assets and operatives, like you. Dig a trench, Director, and make it a deep one, because none of you are safe anymore. <laughs> <laughs>